So this is Math 116, Section 1.5, Solving a System of Linear Equations. So there's essentially two things that I want you to be able to do from this section. The first one is to be able to solve a system of linear equations, and by that I mean an x, y, z kind of stacking of equations, and then set up a story problem and solve it. So for the first one, I'm going to work out a problem that solves a system of linear equations uh, using substitution as opposed to using a graph. Hold on. So this is question number 13 and it's on page 104 in the 10th edition of the textbook and it says 7x plus 2y equals 26 3x minus 4y equals 16 and you're essentially supposed to solve 4x and y and you should be able to do a problem like this for the test. So you can use either elimination or you can call it substitution. I don't necessarily care what you call it. You can just um, sub substitution. I'm going to get distracted by writing out the word substitution. You essentially want to get one of these equations in, ter in terms of one variable only. So. I'm just going to pick one. There's lots of different ways to do this. There's not one right answer, but I'm just going to choose this one, like from the top, and say, well, here I have 7x plus 2y equals 26. Now I've just rewritten the equation. I want to write this equation in terms of one variable only. So I want to get y by itself. So here's my goal. Get y alone, all by itself. Okay. So you think, well, I'm going to do this. Why am I going to do this? Well, that way I can substitute it into the second equation and solve for the other variable. Of course! That's what you were all thinking. So first of all, I'm going to take the 7x and put it on that side. Again, my goal is to get y alone. So now I divide everything by 2, and I get y equals 13 minus 7, oops, 7 divided by 2x. I wish that 7 over 2 was an, a simpler number, but I can deal with it. So we have all we've done now is rewritten the first equation like this so that we have y by itself. And the reason we've done that is now we can substitute that into this equation. So you, I guess they would call this the substitution method, but again, I don't necessarily care what you call the method. So now we have 3x minus 4 times, I'm plugging in y, 13 minus 7 to x. Do you see there used to be a y right there? But now I plugged in this whole equation equals 16. So I've rewritten this second equation. It's the same thing, but instead of y right here, I've plugged in this equation. So the reason I did that is now everything is in terms of x, so I can solve for x. So part, sort of the second strategy here is solve for x. First you get y alone, then you solve for x. So we have 3x minus. 4 times 13 is 52, plus, because I have minus times minus, plus, I have 4 times 7 divided by 2, or 7 times 4, so you can think of that as, um, sorry, it'd be 7 times 2, 14x equals 16, so you get 17x, because I add the 14x and the 3x, bring the 52 over to the other side, so you're adding 52 to both sides. 17x equals 68, and that means x equals 4, because I did 68 divided by 17. So x equals 4. So we're not done yet because we have to solve for both. So x equals 4. Now we plug back in here. I'm going to go to blue. So we're going to solve for y. Solve for y. I guess this is a three-step problem the way I've set it up here. So we have y is equal to 13 minus 7 two, 7 halves times 4. So that's 13 minus 7 times 2. So the whole thing is negative 1. So your answer is x equals 4 and y equals negative 1. So if you wanted to break this down into some sort of pattern, this would be step number one, get y alone. Step number two, solve for x. And step number three is solve for y. And you can always check your answers. I will get a new page out. Don't save. So here's how you check your answers. 
which is nice. If you're on a test and you have two hours, you might as well check them, right? We have x equals uh, four, x equals four, and y equals negative one. <laughs> negative negative one. Make that a giant negative. Our first equation was seven x plus two y is equal to 26. We can check our answers like this. Plug in four here, and negative one for y. And that equals 28 minus two is equal to 26. Check. So this is what I mean by check your answers. The second problem is 3x minus 4y. So if you plug in x equals 4, you get 3 times 4 minus 4. y is negative 1. That's 12 plus 4 is equal to 16, which was the, the original equation. So check. So that is an example of a solve a system of linear equations question. So you should be able to do a problem like that. And there's more complicated ones, so if you have a question about a more complicated one, let me know and I'll work that one out too. Just trying to keep these videos a little bit short. So you should also be able to set up a story problem, and here's a story problem that I like. It's question number 47, medications. <laughs> do you like that font? Is that big enough for you? So a nurse has two solutions that contain different concentrations of a certain medication. One is a 20% concentration, the other is a 5% concentration. How many cubic centimeters of each should he, do you like that? The nurse is not a woman, it's a male nurse, mix to obtain 10 cc's of a 15.5% solution. Okay, you can do this. So, you wanna set up this problem. You hear me flipping papers, I'm looking for my answer sheet. Here it is. For these, I often like to draw a little picture. So we're basically, we're going to let x be the 20% solution, and we have some solution here that is, you know, 20%. It's pretty dense. And then we're going to let y is going to be the 5% solution. And we're going to mix some amount of y that's less dense. It's only 5% and we're going to mix them together, and we know at the end we're going to have a total of 10 cc's, cubic centimeters, and the solution is going to be, there it is, the solution is going to be 15.5 percent. So the first thing you have to do for these problems is you have to set up your story problems, because you'll notice we don't have two linear equations yet, but we will. So I'm saying x is the amount of x is the number of cc's of 20% solution, and y is the number of cc's of cubic centimeters of 5% solution. So here's one piece of information that we know. We know x, the, num the amount of 20, plus y, when they add together, we're going to get 10, because the amount of x plus the amount of y equals 10 cc's, because we're adding this amount plus this amount when you add them together they get 10 cc's. We also know that the final percentage here is 15.5 percent. So this is how you write this mathematically. You say, well, there's 20 percent of the medication times I put in x amount. So 20 percent, 0 0.20 times x, that's the amount of medication here, plus 0 0.05, that's the amount of medication for y, times y, that's going to be equal to 0.155, that's the 15 percent, times 10 cc's. So the amount of medication, 20 percent, times the number of cc's of x, times x, plus you know, 0 0.05, 5 percent times y, is going to be equal to 15 percent, 15.5 percent times 10. So now we have our two equations, and we are home free because, <laughs> because we have two equations and two unknowns, and we're back to our previous situation where we're solving. So the first thing we're going to do, step one, is get y by itself. So I'm going to take this equation here. I'm going to rewrite that as y equals 10 minus x. I just took this equation and put x on the other side, so it's 10 minus x. That's step one. I'll use the same color system I used before. So now I'm going to substitute this value into this equation and solve for x. So I have 0.20x plus 
And now I'm going to plug this whole thing in there. 10 minus x, because that's plugging in for y, equals, I'm just going to go ahead and solve this, 15.155 times 10 is essentially 1.55. That's saying that is the number of cubic centimeters of medication that's actually in here. If you were to measure out the amount of medication, it would be 1.55 cubic centimeters. OK, so now we're solving for x, 0.20x plus 10 times 0 0.05 is 0.5 minus 0.05x is equal to 1.55. I'm going to go over here, keep solving, keep solving, keep solving. Now it's 0.15x because I had plus 20 minus 0.05. It leaves us with 0.15x is equal to, I'm going to subtract 0.5 from each side. I'm doing a lot very quickly. So this side, when I subtract the 0.5, leaves that as 1.05. Divide both sides by 0.15. And I'm left with x equals, ah, 7. What? That's right. Put it on your calculator, you guys. 1.05 divided by 0.15 equals 7. So what is that saying? It's saying that x is 7 cc's. So we're taking 7 cc's of this one. Well, now, now you can probably kind of jump ahead and see that we have 7 cc's of this medication. We have to add some amount of y, and they're going to equal 10. But if you didn't know that, you could plug x equals 7 in here. y, I'll switch to blue. I'll switch to blue. 10 minus 7 equals 3. y equals 3. So we are saying, as our final answer, that we want 7 cc's of the 20% solution and 3 cc's of the 5% solution. And in case you you know, got an answer and you have time on your test and you're sitting there thinking, I don't know that that's right. I will show you how to check this answer to show you that you are correct. New paint page. So what you do in order to check it is you say, well, I am claiming that I have 7 cc's of a 20% solution. And I'm going to add that to 3 cc's of a 5% solution. So my pictures are not really to scale. So what you do is you take 7 times 0.20 plus 3 times 0 0.05. And what does that give you? That gives you 1.55. What does that mean? It means you have a total here of 10 cc's. And the amount of medication in here, it's all stirred up, but let's pretend it's sitting at the bottom so we can see it, is 1.55. So the percentage is 1.55 divided by 10 equals 15.5. So this whole thing is a 15.5% solution. We win. We got it. So that one was for all you nurses out there. And for all you non-nurses, pretend like instead of medication, it's money. <laughs> it's a stock portfolio. So if you have questions about this, you can watch the video again or you can email me because I know I went through that pretty quickly. But that is, if we scroll to the top, section 1.5, setting up a story problem and solving it, and then solving the system of linear equations.